Hello everyone, I um, hope you are still enjoying your module about working with parents, families and the community. So I hope that you've spent some time looking at the content around the participatory approach. I know it is sometimes a, um, a strange concept or a very new concept, but it's very valuable to understand that in order for us to work with communities and the parents, we need to have their participation. In other words, everyone is involved. In this process so i want to start off today by just reminding you that in order for us to help children develop their full potential we can't just work with the children that's coming to our centers we need to work with the parents the families as well as the community in which our children is growing up and one of the important parts in the next section of your module is about parent meetings. So we all know that parent meetings are not always the, the most fun and enjoyable um, meetings to attend or to host at our centers. But I think if we can start making the mind shift in how these meetings are being presented, it can make a lot of difference. So parent meetings are very, very important when it comes to the children that we are working with. So we need to inform our parents of what is happening. We need to have those meetings on a one-on-one -on -one basis to share with them how their children is developing. We need to share information with them. We need to teach them um, skills and, and in order for them to be able to support their children's development. So I, th I want to touch on a few important things when it comes to parent meetings. And we often think that it's only those meetings that happens once a term, but it's not just those meetings. It's meetings where we can invite parents to come and um, hear information. We can do workshops. We can gather the parents around to ask them for feedback. We can gather parents around to share good news. We have the one-on-one -on -one meetings with parents where we sit with them and share with them showing them the portfolio of evidence, how the children is being developed and, and what the children are actually doing in schools. But the most important parts that you need to remember about parent meetings is that you need to be professional. In other words, you need to make sure that you are prepared. We can't host a meeting and just fall around not knowing what to do. Being prepared shows that you are passionate about what you do and that you are organized and that you are professional. We need to find ways in encouraging parents to come and attend those meetings and we all know and you are all parents or you have attended some meetings and you know that it can be very boring and you don't always want to go but if we can find creative ways to get our parents to come to the meetings it will make the world's difference so we need to be very specific if you say i'm having a parent meeting about um let's say the creative activities that are happening at the school and you need help with waste products, your meeting can't be about finances because you need to stay on topic. The parents want to come or the people want to come for the exact reason the meeting is happening for. You need to make time to also listen to your parents. It, there's no point in the Remember, participatory approach is about everyone being involved and not just the practitioner or the principal or the school. So make sure that you allow time for feedback. Make sure that you get information from your parents and get them involved in, in what is happening at your school. So um, make sure that your parent meetings are always recorded and make sure that you follow up with parents. If you had a session with them, and you discussed certain things, make sure that in a, in, a, in a while you follow up with him and say, how did this go? Or is this happening? Or what are your thoughts about what we've, we've spoken about? So it's very important to follow up with our parents. And, and obviously there's also other ways in communicating with our parents. Some of you might use message books. And I want you to start thinking about using your notice boards at your school. If you don't have one, I think you need to create a space at your school where you can display information, pictures and posters. And because people are always in and out of your school and the children are being dropped off. They can see what is happening at the school. They can see what you are busy with. The theme of the week can be put on the notice board, things like that, so that we can attract attention and make people curious about what is going on at our school. And also newsletters. We, we can send out newsletters once every term with interesting information and, and educating parents about different things in, in ECD. So, Another thing that I want to make you aware of is that we need to remember that the parents or the community members and the families 
do not always have the knowledge and the skills that you as ECD practitioners have. Remember, you are in training, you are gaining knowledge and you are gaining skills and understanding. But our parents don't always have this. So they don't know how children develop. They don't know that the brain actually develops and that there's physical, motor and social and emotional development. We need to remember that because sometimes we, we think and we assume that parents know this, but they don't. And that's why they often don't realize the importance of the work that you guys are doing. Okay, so we need to make sure that we start sharing information. You need to equip your parents and empower your parents with information about early childhood development so that they can understand what is going on and what is it they what they can do at home okay you see participatory approach it's involving everyone okay so um there's also a section in your module that i want you to pay careful attention to it's it's about supporting and building networks in other words I want to encourage you to start a booklet or a list or a file with information where you read up on information, contact numbers that you've gained. Because remember, you are a, a very valuable part of, of your community because you have access to information, you have access to resources, you have information about resources, and you are supposed to share this with the community. And you need to gather information. You need to understand what is going on in terms of the legal part of child child care. What does the law say? What does um what's the health uh, information going around? What is the children's rights? What is information about different trends or things that's happening about um early child development? So if you come across magazines or articles, keep them because that's valuable information that you can share. So there's one thing that I want to highlight to you and um. You might have come across this in some of your other modules or previously, but we need to understand how children learn. In other words, how children understand and take in information, because it might be something that your parents also don't know. So remember that we always have our theme table and we always have our posters, but I don't think we really understand why we have that and, and why do we have to have that. So remember, children learn from concrete to abstract concrete meaning they learn first by having the thing in their actual hand that they can use their five senses with so if we say the children start from concrete learning it means that they need to use their senses so i'm going to use an example of a, of chocolate so if we say we want children to learn all about chocolate we are going to first start off with giving them a piece of chocolate so that they can taste it, they can smell it, they can touch it, so that their brain can store that information. And as the children get older, and after this experience, they move to the semi-concrete learning. So first remember, they've tasted the chocolate, they know what it tastes like, they know what it looks like and what it feels like. So now when you show them a picture of a chocolate cake or chocolate ice cream, their brain is going to remember what it tastes like, so they will be able to understand what the picture is about. Then the older children get, first they have the concrete learning, then they move to semi-concrete learning, and then they can move to the abstract learning. Abstract meaning it's nothing physical. It's something that we talk about or something that exists, but we don't have it with us. And then children will, when people talk about chocolate or they um, ask them about chocolate without having the piece of chocolate with them or having pictures, they, their brain will remember what it is. So just for you to understand as an ECD practitioner, but also to share this information with your parents. Um, I want to end this session off by reminding you on how important communication skills are. So we said this module is all about learning how to build relationships with our parents so that they are more involved in our schools so that they can support the children at home. And you are also learning about uh, doing surveys, gaining information from your parents. And we all know that if you don't have a relationship with them, people are not going to share information with you. It's just like a friendship. Like, I'm not going to share information with a practitioner without having a, a, a long relationship with them and building trust. 
that's how you feel about your friends and your family. There's certain people that you'll share things with and there's others that you wouldn't. It's all coming down to the relationship. And communication is a crucial, very, very, very important part of that. How we communicate. And I want you to pay attention to all of those things in your module where we speak about active listening. We speak about the building blocks and the stumbling blocks of, of communication. So you'll see those tables in your module. What are the things that we should do to develop a good communication and what are the things that we shouldn't do which can damage our relationships with with the people we communicate with and also keep in mind the language that you use i know sometimes when we do parent meetings we want to talk about the cognitive development of the children and we want to talk about the the physical motor development and i think parents are going to get a heart attack if the, if they hear those things because they don't know what it means so be mindful of the language that you use with your parents or the people that you communicate with. And also make sure that if you send them letters, do you know if your parents can actually read and do they understand what you are reading? So that's a very important part of communication. And lastly, after you've built your relationships and you've gained an understanding of what is happening in your communities, Remember that you are a very important role player in your community in terms of empowering your parents and your community members. And that's where capacity building comes in and information sessions. Capacity building is, say for example, you've learned that your parents don't know what child development is or how their children develop. You can, you can have a workshop with them. So that's capacity building is teaching them skills and knowledge on the five domains of development or the six domains of development. Information sessions is, for example, you've realized that parents don't really know what healthy snacks or lunch boxes should look like. Now you can invite someone, a nurse, or you can invite a dietitian and say, please come and host an information session at my school and share information about all of those um, needs that you've picked up. I hope this was helpful, everyone. Please let me know if you don't understand. Thank you. Good luck.